Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today I'm going to take a look at Roman roads. Now the reason for doing this video is down to the fact that we keep getting requests from people which is absolutely fantastic. We need those uh, especially if there's any school children out there that has some homework to do uh, or if there's any teachers that want us to do a video for a class so do let us know. Um, on average we'll do a, a 15 minute video, 10 to 15 minute video uh, of your choice so just let us know basically so today's request was specifically about Roman roads and what you have to remember about this is people often use the word for example what has the Romans done for us and there's even books called what has the Romans done for us and over the years people have suggested and said things like they gave us houses well interesting fact we had houses before the Romans come along we were not living in caves for example uh, in, in in Iron Age Britain uh, some people say well the Romans gave us flushing toilets well actually uh, they are sort of flushing toilets every time it rains or when they take the stopper out of a bathhouse for example the water was channeled to flush through the latrines or toilets years ago um, and and people often say roads they gave us roads roads are a big Roman thing but what we have to remember is the Romans probably gave us the best roads that we had had uh, for a very very long time if you turn back the clock we did have roadways we had trackways and things like that before the Romans come along famously some people some archaeologists out there landscape archaeologists have come together and draw up maps and plans of prehistoric trackways for example and they are really really interesting because most of them do go in straight lines and the reason for that is it's easier to go from one place to another by going the most direct route and even today if we're out uh, for example walking it is easier uh, in some cases to go from A to B in the most direct line instead of going all the way around here and up down around there and so on so interestingly our prehistoric ancestors pre-roman uh, would have had different routes that they would have used for a long time and we know there was a lot of trading going on before the romans came so it would have been inter-tribal trading for example so you needed to get from one place to another in the quickest possible way which as i said is usually in the most direct route we also know that these trackways would have gone on uh, ridges for example to avoid vast quantities of mud uh, and, and also waterlogged land and we know uh, for example uh, the high street in Worcester for example is on the highest point and even though the Romans laid down the high street for the first time uh, in Worcester and in most cities because at the end of the day high street means main street and um, they would have been using uh, what was already there a, a, a trackway a pathway and um, there are some fantastic photographs of prehistoric trackways that are still in existence today and you will see they are usually uh, edged off by for example uh, trees and some of those trees uh, would have been uh, growing from right back in history when people used to cast off things by walking along them so prehistoric trackways pathways have been around for some time in some areas of britain for example in uh, marshy areas like somerset on the somerset levels and also across into uh, norfolk and cambridgeshire we also know some of these uh, trackways would have been raised on stilts for example if you get a chance uh, there is a fantastic medieval reconstructed village which when lockdown finishes do go there at a place called Cosmaston which is not too far away from Cardiff that sort of area and it is worth going to because it's not just a, uh, a, 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 a medieval village as such and um, there's also a lot of parkland as well and if you have a look around the village first, it's interesting because they've reconstructed the buildings on top of the archaeology. So we know the buildings are where they are. Um, and then go around the, um, uh, the parkland and you can be walking through what is relatively marshy areas, including lake land. And you're walking on wooden platforms uh, above the water and it's the closest you'll get in a way to uh, prehistoric people using their common sense going from A to B in a direct line and if they need to to keep their feet dry raise uh, trackways on for example wood and that's exactly what you see at Cosmoston anyway 
our video really is concentrating on what happened when the Romans came. So famously uh, in BC to start with, 1555 BC, uh, Julius Caesar led an expedition to Britannia as they would have known it and it was a bit of a disaster. They didn't really stay here that long so there isn't no conquest as such. But then in 43 AD Claudius leads the big invasion of Britannia and they conquer this country making it a province of uh, the Roman Empire so we become swallowed up by this big uh, big Roman Empire um, at that time the Romans would have been marching across the country on what would have been prehistoric trackways very ancient uh, highways uh, that would have crisscrossed the country but then the Romans suddenly realized that for an efficient system like they had in Rome itself in Italy uh, and also in some of the new blossoming areas of the Roman Empire they needed proper roads roads that would be much stronger and would take wagons and carts and also thousands and thousands of marching troops and the best thing about the Roman army is every Roman soldier uh, was part of the manpower of this empire and very simply a Roman carries a huge amount of equipment including things like a delobra which is basically a pickaxe they also carry turf cutters bill hooks and even shovels and if you ever get a chance to go to any of the big museums including the British Museum or even the uh, the National Museum of Scotland you'll be able to see those tools in there and the amazing thing is they don't change spades still look like spades even um, uh, trowels used for uh, laying bricks in stone they don't change they still look like they do uh, it, modern ones look like they do uh, from from 43 AD for example and what I'll show you here is a little picture, a little scene of some road building going on. Hopefully you can see that on there. And you will see uh, they're wearing their armour. And that was the uh, amazing thing about Roman armour. Roman soldiers uh, were told to big, dig their uh, marching camps, their forts and, and, and even roadways whilst in equipment. And that's why uh, Lorica Segmentata, by the way, is actually quite good because it does move with the body. Uh, same with the wearing of mail or scale armour. It moves with the body. It's very, very good stuff. You can work whilst wearing it. And uh, what they're doing here, this little scene here, shows some work going on. And you will see shovels in the ground, spades and shovels. They don't change uh, massively uh, in, in modern day. And you will also see baskets. A huge amount of baskets were used for moving soil around and emptying rocks and things like that wherever they were needed. So the Roman war machine was actually set up for building these roads and this was something that it did all across the empire. Very similar to what goes on later on. In the 1700s, 1745, during the Jacobite Rebellion, you have to remember General Wade began the big building project to link up the Highlands with the rest of Britain. And that was really important. And even now, if you drive around Scotland, you may find very straight roads, very good roads. Most of them are actually military roads by General Wade. And that was a really important thing. Military and road systems are important because you you have to think military needs very very good logistics a very good infrastructure and in a way it's very much like the rollout of um, the COVID-19 vaccination that we've got at the moment the military are very good at forming an infrastructure and they did it in Iraq they did it in Afghanistan and wherever they go so the Roman army when they landed in 43 AD actually produced roads as they went around the country and there are literally millions of uh, or thousands and thousands of miles of road crisscrossing the country. Some of them have famous names, for example, Ermine Street, for example. And this Ordnance Survey book, and as I said, and you will know, I do like maps. This Ordnance Survey uh, map was done some time ago, and it's called Roman Britain. And what they've done is overlaid over a British map um things like the settlements and towns so on here we do actually have uh worcester marked on and if you go to where worcester is located on this map uh, you will notice it says vertis 
with a question mark and hopefully you can see that there Virtus has got a question mark and that's really down to the fact that we are 99% sure Virtus is Worcester but obviously uh, it, it could be uh, slightly a few miles from where we think it is. Is Virtus Worcester? We will never fully know. Um, but you have crisscrossing this map as well as the settlements and towns uh, a solid red line and the solid red line are Roman roads that have been found by archaeologists and one of the things that you will notice about Roman roads is they are generally straight once again going back to this old idea like the prehistoric trackways that it leads from A to B in the easiest way which is a direct route basically you do get some kinks and bends in the road uh, and that's the same with Hadrian's Wall famously if you go to Hadrian's Ward uh, there is a, a kink in the wall for example at Limestone Corner so even though they try to keep things straight because it's the best way you do sometimes get a slight deviation of that um, you also have on here uh, some lines or dots or dashes shall we say which are marking where we think roads would continue in other words we found or archaeologists have found one section of roadway uh, and then another section of roadway let's say two miles up the road are they linked across here probably are especially if they're in a straight line so it is actually a very very good map um, and is a very useful aid when we travel to places doing uh, living history about the Romans because we can have a look at what our nearest settlement would have been called in Latin and also what is the nearest main road that they would have been using but they made the roads in a very clever way they used uh, a lot of surveying equipment very much like surveyors use today to a certain degree uh, including things like uh, ropes and chains and they would have also used a device known as a gromer which is something that would have been stuck into the ground and it has four arms on it and each of those four arms have plumb lines on and it was a way of creating uh, or surveying the landscape to put in the roads in a nice straight way looking at landmarks in the distance and aiming for those and what would have happened first of all is these Roman soldiers once the surveying had been done and the marking out had been done would have dug a ditch technically which would have been the uh, the the roadway the road foundation layer basically and a lot of them are first of all lined with large flagstones so that would have created a solid surface below would have been just the natural soil or in some cases bedrock so that would have given a very straight edge and remember the Romans used a lot of plumb lines to create these level surfaces then what they would have done is created a very hard core out of broken rocks and they would have been using these large hammers and their delobras these pickaxes to smash through that and they would have used quite large rocks and that would have been the infill of this ditch that they would have dug they would have also then put another layer of leveling stone on top to a certain degree it doesn't always exist but you often see this leveling line and then above that you would have had uh, a very very strong compacted layer of gravel and we know they often used to throw in here in, in in that layer a lot of iron slag and that is something that we see in Worcester as well so as a byproduct from uh, making things out of iron and remember iron was a, a very special material to the Romans uh, it was used for armor uh, tools equipment and all sorts of things and um, the iron slag the leftover rubbish really that comes from iron would have been thrown in that layer and that's one of the reasons why you often hear a good road described as a metalled road and it's really down to the fact that it went into that layer and even in Worcester as I said we do see that on some of the roads the Roman roads where they've thrown iron slag in there is a road that comes from the Fourgate Street area that runs down to the river and it actually cuts uh, along really parallel with the railway viaduct where the hive is and uh, if you get a chance and look through our Facebook Twitter and Instagram you will see I did a hashtag Worcester Wednesday on the hive site and it does get a mention in there when I helped do the archaeological dig there I spent a lot of my time lay on my front scooping out iron slag from a roadway uh, that runs under the hive today so 
that would have given a very solid compacted surface in what a lot of the roads then have are large slabs and you will notice it's got a camber very much like roads have today uh, it's not flat and that was important to allow rain runoff what usually happens then is they can put in edging stones not very common but it can be placed in there and leave a ditch at the side so any rain or snow will thaw off or run off into those ditches leaving that roadway in a very very good condition that good a condition we still find them archaeologically today very strong road surfaces and not only that uh, in some cases there are a lot of footpaths bridleways and trackways still being used we've seen a few up in the Thumberland, uh, which are actually what's left of those Roman roads, and they still have a very good cambered surface, and they will be around for a very, very long time. But I'm going to end the video there about Roman roads, but you must remember there were trackways, uh, prehistoric pathways in use, trading routes, before the Romans come along. The big thing is the Romans give us very good roads solid roads that don't really get matched again until general wade in the 18th century and then later on in the victorian period when we start using tarmac and having the roads that are still being driven on today so it's quite an interesting one romans what have they done for us given us roads but we did have them before they just gave us the better ones anyway on that note subscribe make sure you comment let us know give us some requests of what videos that you want uh, and we'll 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 do them for you at the end of the day we've got several weeks until lockdown three comes to an end so stay safe have a good weekend and see you tomorrow bye bye